What's up, Ross developers, and welcome to the second part of this answer. So in this, in this part, what I'm going to explain is how to get the data generated by your pressure sensors in your robot and represent it in RVIS. As always, have a look at React Robotics, the creators of this robot that we're going to use for this, uh, this example and all the code will be in the video description, the git, but more importantly, the Rostject where you just have to click and you'll have all the code ready to go and ready to do your experiments. So if you have any doubts or any questions about um, RV's plugins, have a look at this uh, Robot Ignite Academy uh, course on markers very interesting for that. So let's dive in. So the first thing what I, that I've done, if you remember the previous video, if you haven't watched it, have a look at it and then come back. So in this part, what I'm going to explain is how to create these, these uh, markers in RVs. Yeah. So let's first have a look of what you should see. Yeah. So I've created this uh, notebook that you have all the instructions on how to do this. So the first thing is we're going to launch the simulation, which is dogbot gazebo. There you go. We check that I don't have anything running. Okay, I have this running. Let's wait a few seconds. Okay, there you go. So first of all, let's put the dogbot in a in a normal position. The first thing that I'm going to do is stop it. So I'll launch this command that allows me to control it through uh, keyboard teleop. There you go. So I hit K make it stop there you go so now it stopped more or less yeah so what we want to see is the RVs markers for that we open a web shell here or your shell in your local computer and let's launch this the markers this will essentially get the data from the pressure sensors and convert it to something that our vis can visualize. Okay. So in another shell, we launch our vis and we open the graphical tools or in your local computer, you just, the our vis will pop up. So let's have a look just like that. Okay. Let's readjust and open i think i have recent yeah so in dogbot markers package you'll find the the rvis file that it's already everything configured and there you go so as you can see We have a narrow for, for each of the foot pressures and it's proportional to the pressure. So more pressure, it's longer and has a darker color. Well, basically it's converting uh, pressure to the RGB spectrum. So this is what you're going to see. And it's really important that not only it's proportional, but it's also placed in the correct place, uh, just in the place of contact. So how do we do this? So let's go. So the first thing that you have to do is have a look at uh, Dogwell markers. I created this package and inside it, I've created these scripts. So we have two scripts that are really important. The first one is, um, this one, we're going to talk about this one. This one, what it does 
is get the dogbot odometry topic data so basically where is my robot in the world with orientation and so on the base link of the robot okay and publishes the tf from world to base link so let's have a look um, let's have a look at the tfs that we have right now here so ross run tf view frames okay done so it's generated the frames pdf so we can download it from uh, just the users space so let's download it and let's open it and you can see that here we are connecting so basically base link downwards it's everything to do with the robot state publisher you see that the broadcaster is always the robot state publisher okay i won't go into details on how that is done but this connection is done by this publisher of world based tf node and this one is the one that connects the world to the base link this is essential because the data from the sensors from the pressure sensors are in the world frame so if we want to represent everything we have to connect the world frame to the base link and to the robot basically that way we will be able to represent the the pressure points in the world frame so the world frame is this big frame that we have here and you can have a look because here in the global options we are in the world frame if we for example change it somehow then it would change the representation of everything here yeah so if we go here and change it to let's say i don't know uh the right foot so everything is represented for the right foot and now we can see that the fixed point is the right foot and the pressure sensor is represented for the world that's why it's moving yeah okay this is important to understand we need to do these this connection so that the data published by the uh, pressure sensors can be represented in our vis because we have to connect world with the rest of the robot okay so next thing this broadcaster i won't go into details if you want to know more about ts publishers and broadcasters there's a very good course on robot Ignite academy about that so let's let's continue let's go to the code again and the other script that it's really important is this one okay this one the world-based tf it's launched with the simulation so if you go here and you see the main uh, sorry the put robot you see that when you put the robot it starts this publisher so it's transparent for the user you won't see it these arrows are this now it's the script that we have to work here so this essentially what it does is use this marker basic and this marker is one of the multiple markers types that you can use in rviz in this case we are using arrow type i won't go into details on markers and so on but essentially when you launch this python what it does is start this class foot pressure info which is um this one here yeah and in this one we start four different marker basics that each one has a topic id so that when we have a look at the topics for the markers ross topic list grep marker you see that we have one for each foot this allows multiple representations in our 
There are other ways to do it, but this is the most straightforward one. Okay, once this is done, then we are ready to go. Here we create four subscribers for the four sensor contact sensor states, yeah, for each of the foot. And then we have a callback for each one. This it could be done more efficiently, but this, as I said, is a straightforward solution. Yeah. So we have one for each foot. And what we do is each time that we get a contact sensor state, we update the force. We calculate the pressure, which essentially is the magnitude of this three dimensional vector of the force. And then we get the positions and the pressure we divided by 100, basically for scaling reasons, because otherwise the, the arrow would be 100 meters long. Yeah. Okay. Once that's done, for each foot, we give it an index that it's used for markers. And we give it the position, the orientation, which in this case I've just selected that it's upright. So this is a roll and pitch. So here we just put it pointing upwards, the pressure and the minimum and maximum pressure. These minimum and maximum pressures are used for the colors. So here, in this case, I've seen that the pressure is around maximum two. So and negative pressures in this case don't make sense. So we put zero as minimum. And this is the range in which we will calculate the colors and make the conversion from pressure to color. So let's have a look at the class, how this is done. So each time we, sorry, uh, there we go. So each time we update the marker, we update the position, the orientation, the scale, we convert the pressure based on the pressure and the minimum maximum values to an RGB. And this, we use it to change the color of the marker and then we publish the marker. Yeah. How this is done, if we go here, we see that we convert from a range, which is minimum and maximum, to a range which is the wavelengths of visible light. Yep. So we map from minimum to maximum to these wavelengths. And here we have a wavelength based on the pressure. And this wavelength will be converted then into RGB. Yeah, by this script. Okay. And yeah, that's quite it. So there are a lot of things that I haven't explained, but the main idea is this. Once you have it, then you'll be able to publish markers anywhere. Okay. So there you go. Hope that this was useful and see you in the next video.